All right. So let's change this. Uh, my name is Krista Randall, and um, I've been in the animal industry over 30 years. I'm a certi certified vet tech. I am a master pet groomer. I um, was a surgical tech in the 80s. I managed an animal hospital back in the 80s. I then went on and opened up pet grooming salons, kennels, and doggy daycares up and down the East Coast from Cape Cod to St. Augustine, Florida. Um, I'm super excited to share all this information. And um, as I had mentioned, if you're not able to attend live, I am going to record this, upload it to YouTube. If you are not familiar with my YouTube channel, you'll have that link and you'll be able to check out all the other classes that I've done on nutrition and natural flea and tick and digestive and arthritis and pain and inflammation. So um, feel free to check all those out. So I'm going to share my screen and we will chat about allergies. Minimize this. There we go. Perfect. All right, uh, Beth, I can still see you. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Awesome, perfect, yay. All right, so we are gonna talk about support for allergic responses today. And this is huge. This is um, my buka. My, my buka we adopted about uh, two years ago. He was 11 years old at the time. He's 13 years old now. Buka suffered from severe food intolerances and environmental allergies. Lord knows what happened to him before we got him. But you can see the difference that detoxing his body and um, all the things that we're going to talk about made a difference for him. So treating allergies is very, very expensive and it's rarely effective. Um, you know, allergies are one of the top reasons that pets are euthanized or dropped off to shelters. And I am in the rescue industry. And um, this is one of the main reasons that people are relinquishing their dogs to us right now. Uh, a couple symptoms of allergies, there's more, but these are the basics, itchy skin, hot spots, abscesses, especially like between the toes, that's, or anal gland abscesses, ear flapping, feet chewing, discharge in the ears, discharge from the feet, digestive problems, chronic diarrhea, and behavioral cha cha changes. Some dogs become very lethargic and depressed, others become aggressive. Buka's symptoms of allergies were itchy skin. He had hot spots all over his body, ear infections. He was constantly chewing at his feet, flapping his ears. Um, he had major hair loss, as you can see over here. Um, he had severe food intolerances, inconsistent stools. I could really see a very mucousy stool because it was trying to protect the intestinal tract for, with all the damage. And he was really grumpy. He, he was a grouchy bear. Why does this happen? So the body's immune system misfires. This is causes a dog to react to everyday allergens. Um, this misfiring causes your dogs to react to everyday occurrences like food, uh, environment, cleaning products in your home, laundry detergents, the list goes on and on. Um, you know, Glade plugins, things like that can really set a dog off. Traditional medications reduce the dog's reaction to the allergens, but it also shuts down your dog's immune system. What these um, typical treatments are doing is suppressing the immune system so that he doesn't have an itch. Very much like somebody who has had a organ transplant, they put them on immune suppressing drugs so the immune system can't attack that organ, right? So why does it target the skin and the intestinal tract? These are areas that have higher proportions of mast cells, which release histamines. That's why your dog's skin breaks out, your digestive tract can react with disturbances. It all stems from the mast cells in the body. They're overabundant in the digestive tract. Hence why we're seeing such a huge number of mast cell tumors lately 
due to chronic inflammation that dogs are in for years and years. There are dogs that suffer with allergies or just chronic inflammation for years. And then all of a sudden at age, you know, five, six, seven, they now have cancers. A few causes are over vaccinating dogs, a compromised immune system, inhalant allergens, which we can't control, but I'm going to show you how we're going to boost the immune system so the body can control that. We can't control the environment. Um, food sensitivities, flea allergies are huge. Staph hypersensitivity. So they, they and we all have staph on our body, but when there's an overgrowth of staph because the body can't combat it, that's when it turns into those rashes, hot spots, and oozy sores. And thyroid disease, thyroid disease is huge, not only in animals, but people due to all the chemicals in products we use, cleaning products, shampoos, conditioners. So let's start with vaccinosis. Some dogs, especially of certain breeds, are exceptionally prone to developing vaccinosis. You need to stop vaccinating after a puppy's core vaccine. We need to know whether the dog actually needs a vaccine or not, not just blindly giving an animal a vaccine. So the adverse reaction can get worse and worse when subsequent vaccinations are given. They can accumulate into anaphylactic shock and autoimmune disease. My Brussels Griffon is going to be 12 years old and about, we adopted her um, about six years ago and about five years ago when she had her rabies booster, she went into anaphylactic shock. She had had so many vaccines prior that her body just said enough's enough. So we no longer vaccinate her. What does this mean? It means that other cells in the dog's body are also misfiring, such as cancer cells, viruses, bacteria. They can all go unchecked if the immune system is compromised. Um, and, and they have no immune system to stop fending off these harmful invaders. So here are some traditional treatments that you may be familiar with that if we go to a traditional veterinarian, they may uh, prescribe Apoquil, Cytopoint, Atopica, steroids, antibiotics, prescription allergy foods. The, the challenge with these is they only treat the symptoms. They're a Band-Aid on top of a wound. They don't get to the root cause. They don't stop the inflammation. They're only um, stopping the symptoms. So allergy foods, these are hydrolyzed proteins. So let's take a look at what hydrolyzed protein is. It's a flavor enhancer that can be used in meat, poultry products. They're made from plant sources such as soy, which most dogs are allergic to, wheat, most dogs are allergic to, and from other animal sources such as milk, which dairy does not do well with a lot of animals as well. These proteins have many, many side effects. There's also MSG in these hydrolyzed protein foods, also known to cause brain problems. Um, other side effects, they're loaded with starch, which we know makes allergy symptoms worse, especially if your dog is constantly battling yeast. Yeasty feet, you know, those feet that smell like Fritos, yeasty ears, that black gunk that's in there. They contain low quality oils that can become rancid and they, became, they contain fillers like powdered cellulose. I'm not gonna eat powdered cellulose and I'm certainly not gonna feed it to my dog. So prescriptions, let's just choose one. I chose Apoquil because it was number one on the list. So Apoquils demolish essential parts of your dog's immune fighting system. They suppress the symptoms, means yes, they do get, a get rid of some of the symptoms for a time being until your dog gets used to it and then it becomes resistant to it. But they're doing that without addressing the root cause like an illness or a disease. They all suppress the immune system. So here, this is an older study of Apoquel and you can see here's some of the side of, uh, effects that were reported. Now, you've gotta remember, these are the reported ones and 
I hate to tell you, but a lot of veterinarians do not report these. Number one, it takes time to report them. And number two, they do get um, kickbacks and income from prescribing these pharmaceuticals. I know that because I was an office manager. We used to get large checks from Science Diet for selling so much Science Diet. We used to get large checks for selling so, so much of a pharmaceutical. So you can see there's a lot of side effects that are reported here. And this is the latest. This labeling happened about a year ago. Um, this is on the Apoquil, that five foot pamphlet that you pull out, right? That nobody ever reads. It is labeled new neoplastic conditions, benign and malignant. So basically it's labeled that it does cause cancer. So probably not a good idea to put our dogs on this. So what can we do? First thing is education is the most powerful weapon you can have uh, to change the world, to change yourself, to change your own health and to change your pet's health is knowledge is power. So we're gonna start there. Um, all right, let's get started. So these are the things that we can do. We can titer for vaccines to see whether our dog has proper immunity. We can do core vaccines only when they are babies. We want to feed a bioavailable whole food diet. That's it. No processed food at all. Um, we want to treat naturally to boost the immune system, not suppress the immune system. We want to do allergy testing. We want to know what is causing this inflammation. Microbiome tests. Um, this was a game changer for my buka, that big lab that I showed you. And detoxing your dog your home, your environment, your lawn, um, all of these make a huge difference. You also wanna find a veterinarian that you work with. If you can find an amazing alternative holistic veterinarian in your area, that is wonderful. I know that not all of us have that opportunity. And in fact, I'm leaving the West Coast of Florida next week and I'm heading to the East Coast of Florida to see this phenomenal woman here, Dr. Norma. Um, she and I built one of our facilities together. She um, treats, she works with um, Chinese medicine and acupuncture. She's actually a professor at the Chi Institute in Fort Lauderdale, where she teaches other veterinarians acupuncture. But we really speak the same language and we work with the individual dog to come up with a plan that's good for that particular dog. So vaccine titers, I know a lot of people um, have questions about this and they're not really sure what it is. So this is a mission statement by um, Dr. Rob and it allows veterinarians to make the decision that are in the best interest of the animal's health to prevent animals from being over vaccinated, which can lead to illness or death, to bring awareness to pet owners, the dangers of over vaccination to amend the rabies law. So all this is, is a blood test. So instead of vaccinating your dog every day, every year, what you would do is you would draw blood, you would send it away to a tighter uh, company and some veterinarians offer it with their basic lab, but we're going to go to the next screen. Dr. Jean Dobbs at Hemiopet offers titer testing very, very inexpensively. She's got a 15% discount, autumn discount going on right now. A distemper parvo titer is only $58. Um, the rabies titer, I, I forget exactly. I think it's like $100. I can't remember exactly. But um, these are all the different things that you can titer for. Myself, personally, I just do distemper and parvo and um, I do rabies. I have never, ever had a dog's titer come back. Not enough immunity. Uh, I was really excited. Um, a gentleman adopted a dog for me last year and he just had him titered last week and his, his immunity was phenomenal. So this is where you would send that blood to Hemiopet titer testing here. If you wanna take a screenshot and you'll also get this in the replay. It's super easy to do. Then the microbiome test. This is where my guy really struggled. And I'm going to show you what his tests look like in the next slides. 
Um, a healthy gut is compromised with thousands and thousands of different microbes. And this diversity, this balanced community um, of microbes is what helps the body function. It's what helps your dog's immune system. Uh, and it helps if your dog has chronic intestinal challenges, most likely he has some sort of a leaky gut and things like diarrhea or constipation or, um, you know, on and off mucusy stool. Um, and sometimes this can happen over a period of time. It could be good for two weeks and then just out of the blue have this, you know, uh, really soft mucusy stool. This kind of disruption in the microbiome, um, it, it can be from disease, age, diet, medications, especially antibiotics. One round of antibiotics will wipe out your dog's microbiome for the next six months and you need to rebuild it. It's super easy to do. Here's the test. And all you do is send a little bit of a fecal matter in this test tube and they send you the report. So when we got Buka, I knew just by looking at him that he was a disaster and by um, his stool. So you can see on the right hand side is Buka's microbiome. He was lacking um, a, a, a boatload of beneficial bacteria. And then it, it breaks it down. And I just, I'm just going to show you two of his slides. But for example, um, this one down here, Buka has none, zero of this particular bacteria. This one, he has zero of this particular bacteria, zero of this one, zero of this one. He was a disaster. And then it gives you ideas how to um, increase that particular bacteria. For example, one of these, you can increase just by simply adding asparagus, which is a natural prebiotic to their food. So I started adding asparagus to his food. Then we are going to talk about allergy testing. This was my all-time game changer. And I recommend this for all my clients that have a dog that has any type of itching, scratching, chewing, you know, ear flapping, chronic ear infections, or digestive challenges. We need to know what is triggering this inflammation. So if this sounds like your dog, you may want to consider it. It's super easy. What you do is you go right here to chemopet.org NutriScan. This is Dr. Dobbs. And um, you order this test. It's a saliva test. They're going to send you basically like this little Q-tip and you're going to get saliva from your dog's mouth and you're going to send it in. And in two weeks, you're going to have the results. So this is what Bukas looks like. And you can see, I, you know, I've got my little notes up here. What was happening? Um, and you know, it basically, he had severe itching in his face, muzzle, ears, feet, hocks. He would put his feet in his mouth, like it was in a bear trap and try to chew him off. Um, he did come with some intestinal parasites. So I knew that his gut was out of balance, but he was on a raw diet, really, you know, quite balanced with salmon, sardines, lots of omega, spinach, blueberries, asparagus, and still, and then he was on these supplements. Colostrum has been really effective in helping allergies too. Um, so you can see he had a reaction to beef and chicken and corn and duck and lamb and milk and pork and soy and turkey, venison. Um, oh, I, I think I did the same one. Sorry, I meant to give the other one. He also is allergic to fish and sweet potato. So we ended up de devising a diet of pheasant, quail, alligator, and only green vegetables. No, he's allergic to carrots and sweet potatoes, anything with natural sugar. So that brings us into a warming and cooling foods. And this is in Chinese medicine. These two sheets are actually from Dr. Norma, my friend um, who teaches a nutrition course at the Chi Institute. So when you have a warming food, that warms the body. So if you have a dog that is already in the state of inflammation, you want to cool the body. You don't want to warm it. So you definitely want to, until you have your allergy results, it's a good idea to remove chicken, venison, shrimp, lobster, uh, beef kidney, lamb kidney, all of these items that are on this list and all of these vegetables. Um, 
you want to stick to cooling foods, turkey, duck, cod, um, and really cool vegetables. So we have cool vegetables in the summertime. We grow a lot of things like cucumbers because they're full of hydration and they're cooling. Zucchini, yellow squash, very, very cooling. Um, so you can, and, and mushrooms are really such an amazing um, nutrient and also help with allergies. So you wanna switch to a cool food until you get your allergy results. And then some of our final suggestions. So you wanna feed a biologically appropriate diet, a whole food diet, supplements to support the immune system, not suppress the immune system bathing with natural products. Again, we don't want to use a shampoo, a pet shampoo that's loaded with uh, phthalates and um, sodium uh, chloride and, and all these toxins that are going to aggravate the pet's immune system. You want to eliminate all toxins in the environment if you can, um, you know, lawn chemicals, spraying for bugs on the outside, try to go the natural route. There's a lot of natural options tighter your pets, don't over vaccinate, natural flea and tick protection using essential oils and natural um, food additives and natural heartworm prevention. This is one class on YouTube that you can go back and view. Um, we use a product called HWF, which is derived from apricot seed kernel, as opposed to using HeartGuard or NextGuard because you don't want to feed them a pesticide. So a whole food diet may look something like this. You can buy commercially prepared raw food diets. That's a blend of 80% muscle, 10% bone, 10% organ. Um, if you're not ready to go the raw food route, there's a lot of really great cooked diets out there. Farmer's dog is nice. There's a new one called Four Pets that I really like, especially for dogs with kidney challenges. And these are the three most basic supplements that you're going to add to the diet for the immune system. And we're gonna talk about them a little bit further. Um, all natural um, shampoo. I currently just popped this one in here because I'm in Florida. It's, it's 85 degrees and the fleas are wild. So this is a typical one that I use. I make my own with distilled water, Castile soap. I like Dr. Brommer's, touch of olive oil, I use rosemary essential oil, peppermint essential oil. Um, if you have a dog that has um, severely itchy skin for allergies, lemon, lavender, and peppermint are great. All three of those when combined together are nature's antihistamine. That's like putting Benadryl into your shampoo. Um, we talked about non-toxic cleaning a little bit, but just, just phthalates. Look at the side effects, fetal development hazards, endocrine disruptors. These are what cause the thyroid challenges, testicular toxicity, reproductive toxicity, respiratory distress, cancer causing agents, organ toxicity, nervous system toxicity. These are all in just basic things you're using. That Windex, that Lysol toilet bowl cleaner, the plugins, that carpet powder, fragrance, all of these things aggravate a pet with allergies. So um, OnGuard uh, has a whole cleaning system. This is the OnGuard concentrate. This makes 13 spray bottles at 80 cents a piece. Very, very inexpensive. I think one bottle of like Clorox spray for the countertops is, I don't know. I, I looked at the store the other day, it was like 6.99, it was ridiculous. These are 80 cents a piece, make spray. This is on guard hand wash, which I love for any type of hot spots or um, abscesses in their feet. It works great too. This is the on guard laundry detergent. Remember sweaters, jackets, blankets, bedding, linens that your dogs are laying on. They're absorbing all of those toxins from the laundry detergent. And we also have the Abode line, which is amazing. This is very, very clean smelling. This is the oil you can diffuse and um, freshen the air. We have the dish soap, we have dish pods, we have hand cleaner, we have laundry pods. Um, and this is the concentrate cleaner right here. So you just add that to a spray bottle. Um, it's in that small little bottle so that we can um, be a little bit more environmental friendly and sustainable. 
So some basic healthy habits. This is the kit that we have that we just, this is one of the basic kits that we start everybody on. Um, it comes with the XE Omega. Omegas are awesome for reducing inflammation. It comes with the PB Assist, which is the pre and probiotic to balance your dog's gut. The Digest Zen for any tummy problems. Frankincense and lavender together in your shampoo. Amazing if your dog is having an overgrowth of staff. Um, it comes with your diffuser. The On Guard um, is great for any open wounds. And then as I had mentioned, lemon, lavender, peppermint, nature's Benadryl. You can put that in the diffuser and diffuse if your pet has runny eyes, sneezing, really struggling with maybe pollen. You can also put that in your shampoo. Um, to help calm their skin and the fractionated coconut oil for uh, diluting. So detoxing their bodies. I highly, highly recommend that you detox your dog at least once a year. I detox my dog twice a year. This is um, a quick little uh, just chart of, of the you know, that I send out for people who want to detox their dog of exactly what supplements they're going to use, what day they're going to use it on. We have had dogs that were having kidney and liver challenges that after a 30 day detox, their blood values were back to normal. My dog was one of them. He had some kidney challenges when we adopted him and he's doing great now. So Zendocrine supports the body's organs to naturally rid itself from unwanted substances and it supports healthy liver function. We always start with the liver when we have skin problems because the liver is our filtering organs that filters all those toxins out. Zendocrine complex supports a healthy cleansing of all the filtering organs, the liver, the kidneys, the lung, and the colon. And then the DDR prime is DNA repair. It's a must for all dogs. You want to reproduce healthy living cells and get rid of those mutated cells. So Terrazyme. Terrazyme is my best friend and my doggy's best friend. So this is a digestive enzyme. If you choose not to do a raw diet, then you, you must add Terrazyme. So I add Terrazyme to my raw diet anyhow because Buka does have um, challenges. What Terrazyme does for allergy challenges is it gobbles up all that histamine in the gut. So it's eating all that up, it's dissolving it. And for a dog that's not on a raw diet, you're missing the live enzymes that you would get from raw food. So you must replace those enzymes. They're only given so many enzymes at birth. Um, and through illness and pharmaceuticals and spaying and neutering and vaccines, all of those enzymes are depleted till eventually they go in bankruptcy and your pet becomes diseased and will pass away. So um, you must replace those. Um, PB Assist is our pre and probiotic. This has 6 billion CFUs of active probiotic cultures. It is double encapsulated. So the first capsule is a prebiotic that neutralizes the stomach acid. And this is really, really important, especially for dogs, because a dog's digestive tract and stomach acid was designed to, um, to break down bone. So if they're in the wild, they would be, you know, chewing bones. And so it's very, very strong. So if you feed a dog a liquid or powder probiotic and it gets to the stomach, it's killed. It never makes it down to the digestive tract. So it's super important to have this double encapsulated. Um, and what this does is promote positive um, balance of good and bad bacteria, helps uh, healthy intestinal microflora, um, really helps the digestive system function, helps with the absorption of food. Game changer for an older dog who is really struggling to keep weight on or, um, you know, just, just not absorbing as many nutrients from their food anymore, just due to age. Helps boost the immune system. 70% of the immune system lives in the digestive tract. So you can imagine dogs with allergies and if their digestive tract's out of balance, that's where their immune system is. That's why they struggle so much. So that's the first place that we really, really want to focus on. Um, and 
uh, I use this every day as a maintenance program. If any of my dogs have any type of challenge on occasion, um, my Brussels Griffon may get a little UTI. If she does, I give her the PB assist twice a day instead of once a day. So I'm really boosting her immune system so she can fend off all that bacteria that she's got in her bladder. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, lifelong vitality. So this is our basic um, vitamin and mineral supplement. If you're not feeding a very diverse whole food raw diet, you will want to add a vitamin mineral supplement. Um, this is a three pack and these are just some of the vitamins that are in it. It's a whole food supplement. There are no synthetics at all. It also has a um, cellular supplement in there and that XE Omega that we talked about earlier that comes in this three pack. All of my dogs do get this once a day. Lemon, lavender, and peppermint. This is my boy Capone. Um, he really struggled with environmental allergies when we left Florida and went back to Cape Cod. He was a Florida dog to begin with. So we lived in Florida full time. And so when we started going back to Cape Cod for the summers, he was allergic to ragweed and some of those outside pollens. So lemon, lavender, and peppermint was what I used in his uh, shampoos. I also diffused it. But then doTERRA has made this really, really handy tri -ease. And these are gel caps that have lemon, lavender, and peppermint in them. So before we traveled, about three to four days before traveling, I would give him one of these in the morning, one in the evening to boost his immune system, not to uh, deplete it or to mask it. And um, I did it for about three to four days when we got to the Cape, and then his body was ready. So I want to thank you very, very much for joining me. And if you have any questions or I can help you get started, um, I would love to set up an appointment and chat. Here's my contact information. So I'm going to stop the share and I am going to look in the chat. Um, all right, Kathleen, Kathleen, one of my clients that I talked to about did the microbiome testing. Yay. And uh, I'll take you off mute and you can tell us a little bit more. Which one is the probiotic you recommend for dogs with kidney disease? The PB assist. I like the PB assist. PB assist. Yeah, I love the PB assist. And where can we get the chart for the 30 day detox? Um, I actually have a private group that um, we can, uh, you can access my entire 30 days, but I'm thinking about, um, doing another 30 day detox. My dogs have been down here in Florida and they've been swimming in the pool. And unfortunately I can't control the water that's in the pool. So I don't like the water that is here in Florida. So I'm thinking about doing a 30 day detox, um, maybe around April 15th or May 1st. So if you guys want to join that, I'll run it and I'll post every day for 30 days. Um, Victoria, and, I'll, I'll send you the, um, the charts. Thank yeah. You. yeah. And, and you can put her into the group right. too. Right. And, um, so Victoria, there's a, if you go to the guides in my group, I posted everything in the guides one through 28. And so you can just go to each guide and follow along too. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah. It, and there's different kind of, guides for small dogs and large dogs. So you, yes. you have different yeah. dosages, um, for them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me look down further. Uh, Candy, where is the dosage? Where is the dosage posted for these? How are you giving in since they're capsules, sprinkling it in the food? Um, Krista, where is the essential oil mixture, paw chewing, itching? Okay. So the dosage for the dogs, um, uh, any dog under 40 pounds, um, you can make your own veggie cap, any dog over 40 pounds. Um, but I can send you candy. I can, you know what I'll do is I'll put the charts for the small dogs and large dogs in my email, the replay. So you'll have the actual dosages Thank for small you. dogs and large dogs. I think that'll be helpful for everybody. Those um, were on the pills you were talking about. They actually showed, um, 
they were deuterra pills and they were yep. particular blends. So I was just wondering if they were um, specific, but you just answered it with the 40 pounds. So thank you. Yes. And, and, and um, I think you'll see, so each one um, on the small dog and the large dog chart, like your guys, can do, um, of all the veggie caps, your guys are large enough that they can do one veggie cap morning and night um, because um, of their size. And so that's great for them. The only supplement that I sprinkle on my food to answer your question there is I do sprinkle the terrazyme onto the food. I open the terrazyme capsule, which is the digestive That's enzyme. the one I was talking about. Yep. And I sprinkle, so Buka gets one whole one every meal and then Bean and Bella. So Bean is six pounds and Bella is, she's like 11 or 12 pounds now. I split, I open a capsule and I give her half um, and then the other one half twice a day. Um, you know, That's... you don't have to, you don't have to open it and sprinkle it. The only reason I do is just because they're getting a lot of supplements. It's just one less pill for them to swallow. Mm -hmm. And the way I give those pills is, um, I, I use either almond butter. I never use peanut butter because they can be a little bit reactive to peanuts. I'll use almond butter. Um, I'll use a vegan cream cheese. Um, and I, I just put all the capsules right in there and they think, and then I put it on top. They think it's like a cherry on top. They think it's candy. <laughs> um, and they all gobble that. Callie, how do I send the titer to? Okay, Callie, that's a great question. So that website, and I'll make sure to link, look, the, put those websites in my follow-up email as well. That website, just go to that website, gives you exact instructions. And it, it actually has a form for you to fill out and it will tell you exactly what to do, but they're super easy. I just have my vet draw my blood. He gives me the blood that's spun down and I ship it out. So we're going to go with just a neutral. Um, and, oh, Kathleen, tell us about your, um, your lady who did the microbiome test. You're on mute. You unmute yourself. There we go. Sorry about that. So I was very thrilled because um, this puppy was 10 months old in October and began with diarrhea. So they just thought it was just a fluke and blah, 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 blah. The dog landed up. He's now one years old and he has still had chronic diarrhea, just so you know. But in any event, I recommended the biome testing because the veterinarian had recommended at least three different types of kibble, including the hydrolyzed one for food intolerances. Every time they would introduce kibble, even those formulated for food intolerances, this dog would go into explosive diarrhea. So I spoke with them very eloquently and poignantly. And I said, look, I said, is this working, the kibble? And they said, no. So one of the recommendations, the biome testing revealed that um, his name is Winston, that he had mild to moderate in, uh, in balance. And so one of the recommendations was to increase his protein and to add some variety. So right now I'm working with them and they agreed to go raw. However, because he's so inflamed right now, what they're doing is they being, they're getting the raw, but I'm having them just gently cook it in the oven to help with the transition before he goes full raw. So he is now tolerating and guess what? Over the last three days, his stools are formed. They're no longer much of diarrhea. So I think because he had formed stools, they called me yesterday and they said, we've decided to go with all your recommendations. <laughs> so he's all, they're also giving him Terrazyme twice a day Good. and uh, PB Assist twice a day, because that's what I recommended to get everything going with that gut flora. So I'm not adding anything else right now. I just want to get this baby back on track. And then I did mention today, because they can't get some raw food from me. I mentioned that I'd like to get him into a detox, but I want to get him settled for a good month of solid stools because he's been so inflamed for so long that it'll be a slow process. But, you know, to anybody out there that's listening, this stuff works. You just have to be patient and you have to have, I always tell people, you have to have that leap of faith. 
because we are so in tuned and accustomed to Western medicine mm -hmm. that it is hard to trust that something more natural and holistic is going to work, but it does. It really does. And, and you, you have know? to be committed. Yes. And it does exactly what you're saying. It takes a long time. I was not able to, I had to slowly transition because Buka had such severe uh, yeah. biome problems. It took me three months um, yeah. of really slow transition and being really patient. And I know people will start and after two or three weeks, oh, this isn't working. And, and sometimes just like humans, they may actually have a flare up in their skin because their liver is detoxing all these, these toxins and it, and it's rebuilding. So they might, you know, like for me, when I detox, I, I used to get all these rashes as my body was expelling. So you may have a flare up in exactly. You have to be patient. You have to be committed and you have to be very, very consistent. Um, and that's, that's where the, yeah, yeah, I'm go ahead. The other thing that I have them doing is uh, diffusing ginger. And Perfect. I also have them rubbing uh, the Digest Zen on his belly 15 minutes prior to meals. Perfect. So that's helping too. So that those are the only implements that they're doing right now until we get him on track. That's awesome. That's what that, what you, is he? Of course. What do you think? He's a golden. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well that is a great testimony i love it love it love it um yeah, yeah. There, there's so many things you can do um you know uh and i'm just looking back through um one of the things too especially for i think a lot of people start with severe um paw chewing and itching and gnawing at their feet um definitely making sure you wipe down their feet every single night before you go to bed, at least. Um, you know, we shower every day when we're outside and we're exposed to all these pollens. Dogs don't shower, their nose is in there, their feet are in there. So really wiping down their feet is ideal. Um, when Buka, you know, first came to us, his feet were, were swollen and huge and he had abscesses in them. And so I actually soaked them in um, Epsom salts, I would do one cup of Epsom salts with two cups, or excuse me, two drops of frankincense, two drops of lavender mixed in my Ep Epsom salts. And I would soak his feet. I would take like two tablespoons of that combo and use like a kitty litter pan and soak his feet every single night before we went to bed. And that made a big difference too. Um, yes, On Guard is great for wiping their feet down. Um, and, um, also the on guard, um, touch is great for applying to the bottom of their feet to not only disinfect them, but also to boost their immune system. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone. And, um, thanks for joining and I'll get all those links up and, uh, I'll get your email out with a replay. I'm going to just remind me if I forget anything. I'm gonna get the replay up. I'm gonna get the detox charts, large and small dogs. I'm gonna give you the titering link and the allergy testing link. So you can go directly to those websites and view exactly how to get those. Um, I think that's it, right? Okay, I will see you all later. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.